Except right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you, Royce, and welcome everybody to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm your host, Josh Taylor. Good to talk to you again on a Friday night. We've got a lot to discuss. We've got to talk about the Steelers. Day two of training camp has come and gone. Also, we can talk Pirates. They lose the first game of their three-game series with the Phillies tonight, 2-1 to one at PNC Park. We can discuss that as well. And to help me do that, my guest is live tonight in the 93.7 The Fan newsroom, Colin Dunlap, 93.7 The Fan. Colin, I want to talk to you specifically about a couple conversations that you've had uh, on the radio side of things. You talked with Landon Roberts. You also talked with rookie cornerback uh, Corey Trice. You've talked with a couple new faces on this defense. So first things first, just your impression of these two new additions to the defense and also your thoughts on the defense as a whole and what might be different this year considering what we saw last year. Yeah, you know, Josh, I've thought long and hard about this, and, and good Friday to you. How's everything? Um, I, I, I thought long and hard about this. I think this will come down to Holcomb and Landon Roberts. Like, we want to try to get away from that, and we want to try to make this holistic or something much bigger. And, and obviously, the way Joey Porter Jr. plays, because I think he will start from day one, will be a big deal. But we talk so much about Devin Bush. We talk so much about the interior of that linebacking core. Now, we're seeing two fresh faces and two guys we really don't know a whole lot about. And on top of that, one of those two guys, either Cole Holcomb or Elandon Roberts, will be saddled with the responsibility of that green dot. And we'll mm. be calling out that defense. And they're going to have to really hit the ground running and learn everything on the fly. You know, I talked to Elandon Roberts today, and he talked about how long TJ has been there and how long Highsmith meshes with uh, the interior with, with Hayward and how all those guys communicate so well. And then I really thought about it. I was driving back from Latrobe. I thought, well, you know, those guys all communicate so well, but the main communicator is most likely going to be someone who wasn't here last year. Right. That's going to be a big key, Josh. In, in addition to that, you talked about Joey Porter Jr. There were some really, uh, really impressive things from him in day one, including Running down the field with Calvin Austin the third. That was one of those things that caught people's attention. And I know you've been in Latrobe keeping an eye on what's going on in practice. Your early thoughts of Joey Porter Jr. out on the field. Yeah, he thinks he's good, and you need that from a corner. There's no, uh, you know, that there's no doubt in his mind that he can run with ones. There's no doubt that he could cover a receiver who's very good. And he's going to get it every day. Uh, with George Pickens. He's going to get it every day with Deontay Johnson. He's going to get it every day with Allen Robinson. He's going up against the ones on this team that are very good. Um, you did ask about Trice, too. Yeah. I think that Trey Norwood paints a pretty good template for Trice in so much as, you know, obviously, they're different positions, but the Pittsburgh Steelers, you remember this, they were not at all shy about taking a seventh-round pick and putting him in and inserting him in very early in his career on the defensive side of the ball. If Trice is able to come along during training camp, now I'm not thinking that he's going to get a million snaps, but they will not be shy about playing him. He was drafted way later than projected. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a guy that they thought would be maybe a third or fourth rounder. He lasted till the seventh round. I think he's going to make an impact on this football team, and I would not doubt that he plays in some packages pretty early on. You talked about Joey Porter Jr. going up against the ones in practice. Well, the guy leading the ones going into training camp, there's no question about it. It is Kenny Pickett. Uh, Rich Walsh talked to some of Pickett's teammates today, and one of the things they talked about was his leadership, how vocal he is, and how much he has really embraced that role as the leader, not only of the offense, but as the, of the team as, as a whole. And George Pickens talked about it, and Dan Moore Jr., and Allen Robinson was even impressed with what he's seen from Kenny Pickett, and he's a, a fresh face with this team. But as far as what you've seen with Kenny Pickett, I'm not talking about just now, but dating back to his days at Pitt, what works right. for you now with Kenny Pickett as to why he's the guy that should lead this team? Well, I don't think there's going to be the apprehension that there was last year. I think that he understands, not in a, a big way or not, not in the wrong way, I guess I should say, and this goes back to minicamp. Hmm. I think he understands on a totem pole of the Pittsburgh Steelers right now as opposed to last year at this time, he's higher on that than Matt Canada, and he doesn't have to worry about Matt Canada anymore. Uh, we could talk all we want about niceties, and these two guys get along. He invited them to his wedding, all that kind of stuff. Kenny Pickett realizes who's the boss now. 
and it's him more than Matt Canada. And I'll tell you what, this goes back to minicamp this year. If you just showed up and looked at the football field and said, okay, you pick out, if you just know a little bit about football, you pick out, even if they don't have numbers on their shirts, who's the leader of this offense? You just walked in the building and you knew it was Kenny Pickett. It was not like that last year because, frankly, he didn't know how, where his snaps were coming from, what the snap count was going to be, and all of that through camp. He's a much different person, but I do think, and I don't want to over or understate this, I should say, I think he's starting to understand he's much more important to this franchise than an offensive coordinator, and he doesn't need to be so subservient to him. To your point about his leadership in the room, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if, and I'm not even wondering, it, it's something that I pretty much feel, but I, I get that feeling that this is exactly what the Steelers front office expected. I think that's the reason why when they went to the draft a couple years ago, they realized, or should say a year and a half ago, they realized that this was the guy, and that was one of the main reasons. It wasn't just the physical attributes. It wasn't just the accomplishments on the field. The leadership aspect, I think, was probably one of the critical reasons why they thought, let's use a first-round pick on this kid to make him our future quarterback. Well, uh, my compadre Chris Muller had a very good monologue yesterday as I was driving home from Latrobe. And he said in so much as this, that that's all well and good. And it got through the first year, and it might even get through camp this year. But at some point, hmm. the hard tangibles need to start to rise beyond the intangibles. And I think that's absolutely fact with Kenny Pickett. We need to start to see, and I'm not talking about outlier numbers. We need to start seeing... Uh, touchdowns greater than interceptions. We need to start seeing games that are 250 yards passing. We need to start seeing conversions on third down. We can't keep talking about Moxie, and we can't keep talking about how heady he is. We can't keep talking about those kind of things. And I thought about this as, as, as Chris was saying that, and it makes, uh, it makes great sense, Josh. You, you hit on two things I talk about a lot. Touchdowns over interceptions and third downs, and those are really, really important as far as the efficiency of a quarterback and just how useful he can be to an offense. Because if you're turning the ball over too much, not only are you hurting your offense by not being able to score, you're hurting your defense too by having them out on the field for longer periods of time. 412-575-2600 is the number on the Bordas and Bordas hotline. Give us a call. We will talk with you about a few things. we got to take a break. When we come back, we have our tweet of the night. We'll read some tweets. We'll take some phone calls. We'll talk about it all. Stick around.